The Lord be with you. My friends, we continue these green growing days of Pentecost, these days when we walk with Jesus, we hear his teachings, and we learn and grow from them. And so we begin this day with prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, to live according to it, and to grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our gospel today comes from the book of Matthew, as Matthew begins a series of teachings in parables. And so we hear the first of these parables as we enter into Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of our Lord. There's such good news and interesting news in this parable. The first news is that the seed is cast where it may fall. The seed isn't reserved just for the good soil. The seed is cast anywhere and everywhere, and it does produce results. I was thinking about this in terms of, well, a couple of things. Firstly, that the word of God is never wasted. I know I've been a part of churches who have done some particular mission or ministry, sometimes with the hope that it will uh, bring people in as members. And there's been some frustration sometimes that that ministry didn't produce members a hundredfold or 60 or 30. And yet in the time we were doing that ministry, people were affected. Things changed. People had the opportunity to hear a word or experience the act of a Christian in ways that they might not have of before. And so the seed is never wasted. That even somebody who 
hears it for a little while and, and embraces it with joy for a while. And, and maybe, you know those people who join and, and become so filled with fervor and excitement and, and they belong to every committee and they, they memorize every hymn and you know, they become readers and musicians and they join the choir and they, they do all of these things and then one day they're just gone. But in that time, the word mattered. The seed was planted and it began to grow. And that ground then becomes changed ground. Who knows the next time, the next seed, the next opportunity that is sown, it might take root in a different way. So the seed is never wasted. A person who comes to visit our church one time, that matters. What that person experiences, maybe it's a hymn that they remember from when they were a child and last came to church, or, or maybe it was that someone just looked them in the eye and said hello, and that hadn't happened for a long time. Or maybe it was just the right gospel lesson. Or maybe it was that day there was the blessing of the quilts. I don't know. But everything that we do connects to someone in some way and matters to someone in some way. And that soil is never the same after that. And so we hear this lesson over and over again because the seed is cast over and over again. And even for you, my friends, who are so faithful and so committed, across your life, I would guarantee that there's been time when the soil has been rocky or hard or choked with thorns. Our own heart soil changes across time. And the good news is that no matter what we are like, God continues to throw out seed, but I really was going to say bait, because that's how, they, you know, when you throw out bait on the water and, and the fish come. So seed, bait, possibility, any way that God can find an opening in you to find you at a place when you are so hungry or so ready, God is there for you. And it does not mean that your heart has to be perfect soil, yielding soil, productive soil, each and every moment of your day, of your life. Because we're not. But God will continue to cast out invitation. To cast out Hope, words, words like love and faith and forgiveness. So what matters is your soil, your heart, and your willingness to hear it, and the time that we put into hearing it. But what matters more is that God keeps inviting, keeps sowing, keeps inviting. And so that's the other thing that this parable leads me to. And I know I have said this any number of times because scripture collapses time. It reduces time. Some of it's for the sake of efficiency, you know, or some of it is, you know, because we need to get to the next part of the story. And so we may read, and 30 years passed, or the land uh, lived in peace for 40 years. But 40 years is part of the story. Days, 
weeks, time, is part of the story. And so in this story, the time has collapsed between when the seed is planted and when it grows. We are in these days when time is not collapsed, time is not reduced. Time stretches out before us. Time is just time. In these days of shutdowns, sheltering, staying at home, not being able to gather together, these are real moments, real days, weeks, and months. The seed, the seeds of who we are as followers of Christ were sown before the days, or in the midst of the days that we could not be together, in the midst of Palm Sunday, Holy Week, Easter with its new life, Pentecost with the coming of the Holy Spirit, do you hear that each one of these moments is seed being cast? Can you hear the word? Can you hear on Palm Sunday the cries of Hosanna, save us, O Lord? Can you hear the weight of Holy Week when we are given a new commandment to love one another as God has loved us, to love God and to love our neighbor, to kneel at the feet of those in need, to serve one another, to watch then our teacher walk obediently to the cross and die. These are seeds the seed of Christ himself was buried in the tomb for three days and then rose to new life so that we could continue to live and to grow. And then the Holy Spirit came, but not that moment. The Holy Spirit came 50 days later, 50 days later. We have to wait the seeds get sown over and over and over again so that we may be ready. We celebrate the life that Christ has given to us, but we needed to spend time acknowledging that life continues to happen around us. Life continues to happen around us in the face of death, in the face of isolation, our hearts needed to be ready to receive the fire of Pentecost, the power to do what God is asking us to do. And what is it that God is asking us to do with this life? To protect it, to cherish it, to respect one another in the sustaining of that life. And that meant we had to stay home, that we have to keep apart that we can't sing together, that we need to wear a mask when we go out now. These are the ways that the soil has been made ready. And now here we are in these green growing days, these long green growing days that stretch out before us. The season of green, we've been in it now for three or four weeks but it goes clear through till November. We are not meant just to pop and be fully formed Christians, perfect and wonderful in every way. We are meant to let the seed be nurtured in us, to let it grow for us to begin to understand how we are to live out the call that that life and that spirit has given to us. In this parable, the seed is thrown 
again and again in unlikely places for the sake of unlikely people so that it may bear fruit the first time, the second time, the hundredth time. Who knows? But the seed, God's love, God's story, God's promise, God's will is given to us. And we are given time to learn it, to accept it, to explore it, to be surprised by it, to wait for it and watch for it. We continue to grow, to flower, to bloom in ways of its own time, its own place, its own rhythm. And we are in this rhythm of these days where time is truly time. Rest in this time. Grow in this time. Be at peace, my friends, in this time. For this is the time that we have been given in these days, in this place, for the sake of God, for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of the word, and for the sake of one another. Let time be time and grow. Thanks be to God. Oh, my dear ones, you are so loved and you are so missed. God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.